How y'all doing tonight? Tonight, I'm going to get ready for big, low, and slow tomorrow. I got me a 12-pound USDA Choice Whole Packer brisket here. We got the point in the flat. Man, look, and this one's a good floppy one. That's what you want. Oh, yeah, still got the good fat cap on there and everything. We're going to rub it down tonight with some of this good Bezels, the new barbecue rub, Cajun barbecue. Oh, man, it's going to be good. We'll get everything set up so I can start off that low and slow in the morning. Okay, hopefully y'all can see that there. I don't know. Uh, we'll get you zoomed out. I'm going to get you zoomed out here. I got the fat cap side up first. Come on, to Start with some mustard. If I can open it here. Just a little bit. Put on there. Not much because you know, with this beef, you don't want too, too much of a coating of your rub, you know. But this mustard is just going to help the rub to stick. And I'll wash this off just a little bit and dry this dude. That's all we want there. It's just, just enough to, to wet the surface. Now I've got the Bezels, the Cajun rub. If I can get it open here. Come on. I thought I'd open it yesterday. Okay. Flip that around. Here we go. See the Bezels Cajun barbecue rub? Let's just sprinkle that on this side. Like that. Just get it all good and sprinkled around. Let's get a nice little coating to get some flavor on this. This is a good rub, y'all. Nice and sweet. Not too sweet, though. And got a little bit of spice to it. If you like the Bezels Cajun seasoning, you'll love this. So we're just going to sprinkle it on there. I like how this sprinkles, sprinkles on here nice and evenly. With this, with this rub here. We get the fat cap side, just sprinkle on down there, kind of rub that in. We'll flip it over and do the other side. Lean aside here, do the same method. You notice how I put on that cookie cooling rat too, that's going to keep it kind of stay dry. I want this rub to just you know, adhere to it so when it smokes, it's going to form a fine crust on this bad boy. Go back here with this Bezels barbecue rub, yes sir. Rub this good mustard in there and get this side all nice and rubbed up. It's gonna be some good stuff, y'all. I can smell it now. Smells wonderful. That's it, it got it all rubbed up. I'm gonna put a little cellophane over this, set it in the refrigerator. I'm gonna take you outside with me now as I get the uh, Weber kettle with the Cajun Bandit barbecue stack on there ready for tomorrow's smoke. As you can see, I've just got the charcoal ring in and the bottom grate. I'm going to show you how I'm going to build the charcoal up for the fire for the low and slow tomorrow. Okay, I've got my charcoal chimney here. I'm using to measure my charcoal. One whole, one whole chimney. I'm going to put another half a chimney in there. I've got about one. And I'm going to put another half chimney in here. That's going to be plenty for this smoke. That all come together here. I figured out with this rig, if I put too many briquettes in here, that it tends to run a little bit hot. In fact, I'm going to take some of these away. Around here, about one, two, three, four, five, about six of them. So like I said, I, I just don't want this, this thing to raise up in temperature too much. I can always add a little bit more fuel. So I'm going to start out with a little bit less fuel. So about one and a quarter chimneys. So I got this kind of flattened out where it's a nice circle. Now what I want to do, I want to take 10 briquettes right out the center here. Just 10 like that. Just enough to make a small hole in the center. What we'll do tomorrow, we'll light these in the chimney. We'll pour those right in the center and that'll light a fire and I'll get the reaction going. Alright, that's about all we got to do for tonight. We'll put the bandit system and everything together tomorrow. Let me see. I can go ahead and just set this on here. With the barbecue stacker. Let's put the... Where's my bottom rail I'm going to use? In fact, I'm going to put my, I'm going to use a deflector pan here. 
Heat deflectors just kind of keep everything even heat. Just kind of show you. Put in our bottom grate. I put me a water pan, or actually just a catch pan on top of that. May put some apple juice in or something. Now I put my top grate on here, I'll just to show y'all. This one the brisket will be right there. So we'll roll with that. Get started with all that in the morning, y'all. Good morning, y'all. It's about 6.30, 6.15 in the morning. We'll go ahead and light this charcoal here. Chin. Get these up. Ten nice pieces of charcoal going. I'm going to light a little sterno here. It's the way I like to do it. We get that going. Now I'll set my chimney right on top of that. Get my charcoal stacked up in there somewhat. So I'm going to get my ten pieces started. Yeah. We will start the smoke. So got that going. That'll take about two or three minutes. And we back over here to the smoker and the bandit. I already took the top grate off because I brought it inside and I put the brisket on there to kind of come to a bit of room temperature. I think I'm going to put a little bit of hickory here on this charcoal. So it put me about three nice sized chunks of hickory there on the coals. What that will do, that will burn off, or create smoke, give it some good flavor there. I'm going to fire when charcoal is getting ready out, so let's go ahead and get this temperature probe in the meat. And we've got to be real careful with this brisket, with these temperature probes. What will happen is the brisket will draw up and your probe will end up sticking out the bottom. You don't get a good reading. So what you want to do is you want to find the thickest part, something like this right here, but you don't want to get it down to the fat. You know, because you just get a reading on the fat, that's going to do you no good. So, I'm going to look around and make sure it's the thickest part of my meat. Let's see. Probably right down into here somewhere, but try to get it just into that meat. So, I'm going to roll this thing right down in here and get a good measurement on it. And get the probe put in there. Alright. I decided to go in with two temperature probes in, in the in the brisket and one ambient temperature probe for the outside grill town. Yeah, I'm about to go get the uh, hot coals that's put up in this smoke over here. Nice hot coals here. Pour these right down here in the middle. What this will do is start the rest of the fire. That's what we want. Oop, we need a couple more here. Get more jump out, watch it. You see? Then push to the direct center. Okay. Oh, that should be good. Now, let that burn just for a minute while I go get that brisket. All right, so we're gonna start building everything on here. And put the barbecue stacker on here. With just the bottom grate. Make sure that's got a good seal. That's what we want to see. Right, like that. Just have to put this water or this catch pan in here. That's what's to Like that. Pour some liquid in there. To uh, help control everything. Right. Then we're going to put the brisket right here. No need, just like that. We get everything hooked up. We're going to put the lid on it. So I got all my probes and everything situated. Got the eye grill two turned on. Let's go ahead and put a lid on here. Get it all nice and tight here. Then we're going to activate our eye grill two out. It's already activated, picking up the probe. See, I got my grill temp right here. It's hitting 120. Meat probe one, 40 degrees. Uh, meat probe, I mean, not meat, yeah, meat probe one, 
43 degrees, meat probe 244. Great, probes are working great. That's what we want to see when we roll with this here. As soon as we get up to temperature about 225 or so, 230, I'm going to baffle down the hatches down here at the bottom. We'll start maintaining that heat. We've reached about 236 on here. So I'm going to get down here and close these dampers down a little bit. Try to maintain our temperature. That's what we're going to do. I don't know if y'all noticed or not, but I did put my brisket on there fat side up. You know, I, I let it sit overnight with the rub on everything and they're fat side down just so it dry out there on that meat really good but fat side up on the on the smoker is the way I like to do it here I just want to throw that in there in case I didn't say earlier we're gonna get this temperature nice and level off I want to roll between 225 and about 245 or so and man it's gonna be a good low and slow here and Charles about 10 15 I just add a, one or two more little wood chunks, small ones. I uh, wanted to give it a, uh, one little last kiss of uh, a wood there before, uh, before the meat got to attempt to where it wouldn't want to accept any more smoke. So we're at about 150 on the flat and about 144 on the point. Sounds about right. And we're still hovering around 250 or so there on the temperature here in the Cajun Bandit. Like I said, we're just going low and slow with these things. We'll probably hit a stall here in about 10 more degrees. All right, y'all. It's about seven and a half hours, eight hours into this cook. As you saw this morning, I didn't use much fuel, much charcoal. I only used about a chimney, about a chimney and a, and a quarter. My temperature is starting to drop some. It's not one the whole 225, 230, 240, something around 210, drop it off and spin like that for about 20 minutes. I open all the vents, not really helping, so I'm thinking I'm gonna have to add some fuel. So those of you that ask about the Cajun Bandit and stuff, how you get in here to add fuel, you're about to see. And of course, you don't want to have to add fuel, but if you do, it's not really that big a deal. So what we do, we'll put the, I got my heated gloves on here, you know, my heat proof gloves, I'm gonna take this whole apparatus off. We'll just set it down here on, on the concrete. Not that big a deal. Now we can see, we don't really have much fuel left. Set this down. And what we do have left is the lid, we'll push that right there to the center. Help the light this up. Here. We'll just set this around the outside just like we did in the beginning. And I'll tell you what, these heat gloves right here are a must have for sure when you're dealing with stuff like this. I don't need much fuel because we ain't got much longer to go. And sit like that, set those up, I'll start those coals, and we'll put this thing back on top. So I add that little bit more fuel, I'm just gonna take the whole barbecue stacker, everything, we just sit this dude right back up on top. It's really not that bad. If you hate to have to do it, you want to try to plan not to. But I'd rather have to do this and have too, too much fuel in there from the get-go and be running hot the whole cook. All right, in just a matter of minutes, we jump back up to temp. Go ahead and uh, scale our vent down a little bit. That way it don't uh, go crazy on us. That way we'll even our temp out around 240. 235 or something. Alright y'all, on a brisket, I'm about 181 in the flat and about 172 in a point. We go ahead and baste this thing up. Some of this good barbecue sauce. This Mama Doors, which is it's kind of a light flavored mustard style sauce. 
doesn't have too strong of flavor. It's just going to help complement uh, the beef. So we'll take this off here for a second and just base this bad boy down. Look at the beautiful mark. That's gorgeous. All right, that is gorgeous. And I'm just going to base this up and it's going to help add some wonderful flavor to it, y'all. I mean, this thing is just magnificent here. Oh my gosh. This fat side up. It's just, ah, um, oh, wonderful, y'all. Just wonderful. Go ahead and get this on here and get this closed back up. All right, y'all. My grill is starting to go off here. We've hit 190 internal temperature. That is great. I just can't wait. We're going to pull it off. Wrap this brisket, all right? So we'll look at the bar on that. But y'all, sorry I had to record from way over here. I let the camera battery die. And so I gotta plug in the wall over here. Basically, we'll take this top off over here. Let's pull this brisket. Come on. My, oh, don't let that thing get hot. Pull the probes. Oh, sucker just looks gorgeous. You try to get this brisket on this sheet pan over here without it falling apart. There she blows right there, yes sir. Keep them damn flies off of here. I'm gonna wrap this up good. Wrap this up real good, y'all. Let's see, keep them flies away. Keep them wrapping it. I've got cool to put this in, all right? Uh, we'll let this sit for about an hour, all wrapped up like this. This thing's beeping on a two minute warning. What I'm gonna do, all right, I got a clean towel. I'm gonna wrap this guy up, roll him up in a clean towel, and roll him up in a clean towel, and then I'm gonna put him in that cooler over there and we'll let All right, how y'all doing tonight? Been a long cook today. I think it went about 13 hours, almost 14 hours on the brisket. Now, a lot of you have been following uh, through on Facebook, Twitter, all that kind of stuff. Updates on the cook. Thank y'all very much. We're going to go ahead. We're going to cut into it. After I had that long cook, we'll let it sit for about an hour here in the cooler. Show it to you over here. Got it in the cooler. We'll unroll it and put it right here on the cutting board. We're going to cut in this bad boy see what we're dealing with. So we had it in the cooler, wrapped up in the foil too. I'll try to get y'all here. We're uh, we kind of unwrap it and it's still hot here. Get out in the cutting board. Oh wow, smells wonderful. Look at that bark on that dude. That's something else right there, y'all. I'll tell you what. Mm, mm, mm. Oh yeah, Put that mama doors on there. And got that diesel Cajun rub that we put on it earlier before we cooked it. So what we're going to do here, I'm going to try to get it off the foil, get this thing right in the cutting board real quick, not burning my hands too much. Oh man, and this thing is so tender y'all, it's just wanting to come apart almost. Let me, I'm going to have to turn the cam off just for a second. Alright, so what we have here, we're still fat side up, I've got the flat over here, and here's the point. What I want to do, I want to kind of separate the flat from the point just a little bit and we'll cut it because what happens is the the grain of the meat goes a different way on the flat and on the point so we'll pull this back a little bit some of this fat here this fat cap see how I'm just saw a little bit of that off see how you can see the grain goes this way all right right where we see See the grain start changing the way. It's about right here. Okay, what I want to do, I want to go ahead and I want to cut underneath that, right there, and I'm going to cut down like that. And basically, remove the point. Just got the flat here. You look at that. That is gorgeous. Just gorgeous. Let me go. Uh, Find somewhere to set this real quick so I don't get juice going all over the counter because there's juice still just pouring out of here. It's been sitting up an hour. I'm basically going to set this point. I'm going to 
myself over here for a minute and let y'all look at this beautiful flat. Look at that. Oh my gosh. And we're just going to go down. We're going to make a thin slice here. Look at that. It's gorgeous. Look, look, look how it's just falling right off there. I mean, I'm not even having to press on that knife there. That's a nice little smoke ring up there. Just as juicy as can be. Look at that there. And we just pull. Look. Look at that. Look at that. Just pull apart right there. Just tender. Tender as can be. And I just can't get over it. Hot. Hot, hot, hot. So let's give them a taste. Oh, yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, that's something else. I'm going to cut another little piece here. Piece I got the bark on. I mean, just as juicy. I mean, look at that. Look how juicy that is, y'all. And tender. Unbelievable. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, wow. Look. There's that rub on there, too, that bezel. I'm just going here tonight. We'll serve some. We'll cut some more of these thin just strips off like that. But y'all, I just can't get over how tender and juicy. You gotta, I'm gonna zoom you in here real quick and just show you what what I'm talking about when I say juicy and tender. You just get right in there close. Just for a second. All right. I'm gonna watch this. So we just cut this beef. I mean, just falling apart tender in that juice I mean look at that just coming out of there that's something else that's what you call some good Texas style brisket right there with the smoke rain folks some good stuff man I'll have to try this one again soon man <laughs> something else well, I tell y'all probably waiting on just to see a little piece of what this point looks like Let's just shave a little end off of here. Oh, look at that. Oh, my word. Look at that. Right through there. Look at that. Look at just well marbling. And burn ends. Look at that, y'all. That's beautiful right there. Beautiful piece of beef. Give this one a try. <laughs> Mm -mm. Awesome, man. All right, y'all. So if you hadn't tried brisket and you're scared to, heck, I was kind of intimidated. But I threw it on that Cajun Bandit. Set that sucker low and slow. Just add a little fuel at a time as I need it. Worked out great, man. Just like the pros. I'm telling you. Wonderful bark. You can take good bezel uh, with that rub on there. Got that Mama Doors on there. Remember you saw me mop it up with this Mama Doors? You put some of that on there too afterwards, it really don't even need it. I'm telling y'all, this is some good stuff. You can't beat just this brisket, just like this Texas style. Awesome stuff, y'all. Give it a try.